What's going on you guys and welcome back to the A-Ray Show. So for those of you guys that don't know me or anything about my channel, we talk about a lot of different types of things. But one of the things that we like to talk about a lot on this channel is dividend growth investing. As you guys can see over here, this is my dividend portfolio where I like to focus mostly on dividend stocks. As you guys can see, the current value is $8,127.52. We started this portfolio off with $500, so we definitely came a long way, but we still have a long ways to go. And with the S&P 500 selling off in the last few weeks or so, I mean, it hasn't really been going up astronomically like in 2021 to start off 2022. But still with those weeks being pretty tough, we are still up $1,200 with a money weighted to return of almost 40%. So we're definitely doing really well. And with that being said, and this portfolio actually performing pretty well, we're going to be talking about the beauty of dividend growth investing in this video. So if you guys want to know all about dividend growth investing, why it's so beautiful and awesome, then, you know, stay tuned and cue that intro. One of the best things about dividend growth investing is how easy and simple you can make it. It really all just depends on the person. For example, for me, I like spending a lot of time looking into these companies and researching and figure out where I can invest into great growth companies that provide a high growth dividend rate. Or you can be a simple person. Like a lot of people out there don't have a lot of time. You can just look at some main companies. It doesn't even have to be that many stocks. You can look at 25 to 30 stocks, probably even less, or you can just invest into ETFs, call it a day, invest every single week, and then have your portfolio grow in both value and in dividend growth rate. So with that being said, you can pick either side, but as simple as it is, it's actually really beautiful because you really don't have to do it much. All the hard work comes in the beginning when you pick out your stocks. For example, when I first started, I just picked a bunch of stocks that gave out a nice dividend. And with those stocks, they all did pretty well. They're just companies that I knew of. For example, we're looking at stocks like Apple and Microsoft. Of course, everyone knows these two companies, Visa, Texas Instruments. You know, I, these are companies that at first I'm like, OK, I know what these companies are. They pay out a nice dividend. OK, let me just keep them in my portfolio. And then at that point on, you don't really have to do anything else. You can keep it as is and you should perform pretty well. I mean, no guarantees, of course, but for the most part, that worked out for me for the beginning. Me personally, you guys know how I am with this channel and how I like to grow my investments. So I did a little bit more research, cut out the ones that didn't really make any sense. But again, you can keep it very simple and just invest into ETF. So that's the first thing that I really love about dividend growth investing and with dividend stocks. It's super easy and simple and, you know, to each their own. You can keep it as you like. Another great beauty of these stocks that you're going to be investing into inside of your dividend growth portfolio are these stocks are most likely going to be in the S&P 500 and the S&P 500 has been performing super well over the long term. This year it went up 22 and a half percent, which is huge. It's amazing. To be honest, this is this type of expectation is not going to happen every single time where the S&P 500 goes up 22 percent. And it also depends on the type of investments that you're holding. For example, Apple grew a lot more than some of the other stocks in the S&P 500. For example, let's just say Kimberly Clark. That's one that I have inside of my portfolio as well. So let's take a look at how both of these did compared to S&P 500 and compared to themselves. So as you guys can see, Kimberly Clark did about eight and a half percent while Apple did 35 and a half percent. So we got the S&P 500 right in the middle. So that's also a good reason why to have a good mix of stocks inside of your portfolio. Again, it really depends on where you are in your cycle. If you're close to retirement, you're going to be going after stocks like Kimberly Clark that don't grow as much, but they have a great dividend while Apple does have a very low dividend, but they grow their dividend at a higher rate as well as their share value. So again, it really just depends where you are in your cycle. It's great to have a great mix. And again, I have both of these stocks inside of my portfolio. While I have a lot more ways to go to retirement, Apple is great because it not only grows its share price, but it also grows the amount of dividends it gives you per year a lot faster than some of these other companies. And this part of the aspect is beautiful just because it's nice to have a little bit of balance in your life. The S&P 500 does great and you don't really have to worry about it in the long term. Again, no guarantees, but it's definitely a great thing to have inside of your portfolio. So if we take a look at the five year growth rate, we can see that over five years we have been growing a lot better. I mean, 
Kim Lee Clark, 23%. That's what the S&P 500 did this year. But either way, it's still a great percentage over five years. Apple is just insane, 476%, while the S&P 500 basically doubled in five-year time period. And this is consistent. It, if you just take a look at the S&P 500, this blue line over here, the darker blue line, you can see how consistent it goes up. It doesn't boom like crazy like Apple, but it also doesn't kind of se somewhat stay the same like Kimberly Clark. It's a consistent amount. And of course, this is because of the pandemic, that nice little dip, which actually does lead me to the next point, which is when the stock market goes down, this is a perfect time to invest in the most beautiful thing about dividend growth investing. And here's why. So when it comes to having dips in the stock market for these dividend stocks, why it's so awesome is because none other than the yield on cost. And for those of you guys that don't know what yield on cost is, yield on cost is basically a measure of dividend yield calculated by dividing a stock's current dividend by the price initially paid for the stock. So if that sounds confusing, let's take a look at this chart over here. So for example, if you bought Apple five years ago, the, you would be getting a yield on cost of 3%. So to date, Apple's dividend is a lot lower. It is about basically half a percent. So if you paid for Apple and you bought Apple shares five years ago, that same dividend yield that you're getting right now, 0.5%, you're actually getting 3% now. And to kind of put that into perspective, let's say that you bought Apple at $30 you were getting a very low yield back then at $30. But as the price went up and exploded over time, you're now getting 3% yield. So that's kind of the whole idea behind yield on cost is that you're not only getting more for your dollar, but you're also growing your investment. And that's the great thing about dividend growth investing, especially with these higher growth companies. Even though Apple doesn't really pay out that much for a dividend, I mean, let's take a look. Apple pays out about a... I don't even know off the top of my head and I should know. Apple pays out about a 88 cent dividend per year or 22 cents per quarter. So of course that's gonna be very low, but when you pay $30 for a share of Apple, that percentage is a lot higher. And that's why it's so great to have this yield on cost benefit where you buy on the dips. And that's one of the most beautiful things and the weird psychology of a dividend growth investor is when the stock dips, for example, right over here during the pandemic, you're getting a better bang for your buck. You're getting more yield on costs. You're getting more for your dollar. And again, people like me that have a longer time horizon, we love it when the stock dips. We don't necessarily hate when the stock market goes up like crazy like this. That 22 percentage that happened this year makes our value of our, our companies of the stocks that we own go up. But then again, we're hiring our yield on cost and for example if another dip were to come let's just say from apple it goes all the way down here our yield on cost would be a lot higher but again our share price would go lower which means that we'd be able to buy a lot more so it's it's really a weird psychology but it's definitely great as long as the stock market goes down and recovers eventually who really cares what the share price is doing it's all about that yield on cost and i think that's one of the greatest things about dividend growth investing so let me give you guys an even better example so this is a coca-cola stock currently trading around 61 and half dollars now let's take a look at the yield on cost so to date right now currently they're paying about two dollars or 2.74 percent as your yield on cost and this is how much dividend you're getting right now today if you had invested in this company 30 years ago you would be getting a nuts 18 percent i mean that's just crazy you're getting back 18 percent on your dividends that's nuts and of course you know 30 years is a long time but when you are investing into dividend growth companies your goal is not right away for most people that is if you're starting out very early in your 20s 30s and you're looking to retire in your 40s 50s 60s you have all the time in the world and this is exactly the best thing about dividend growth investing is i mean just imagine the day when you are chilling at home you're retiring and you're getting money from your dividends just because of an investment that you made 30 years ago that same price or that same stock that you bought is instead of right now when it's giving you that 2.74 percent it's now giving you 18 damn percent that's a lot i mean it's crazy and you know you love to see it so one of the beauty is all about the yield on cost the other is the time that goes into it and it really does pay off in the long term if you have a long-term mindset dividend growth investing is definitely for you 
if you have a short term mindset, you can still make it work for you. It's just probably a lot more work because you're also thinking about, OK, here's the tax benefits, the advantages. Here's where I lose money due to taxes, because with dividends, you do have to pay taxes. But that's a whole subject for a different video, which we're not going to be talking about in this video. We're just going to be talking about the good things, not the bad things like taxes. Anyways, one of the last things that we're going to be talking about in this video and why dividend growth investing is so beautiful is because of the journey. And what I mean by the journey is my current value of my portfolio right now is sitting at $8,130. And guys, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I started off with $500. I'm extremely proud and happy with the results that I have after about a year and a half. I mean, I know this amount of value in this portfolio is not as much as a lot of other people out there, especially other YouTubers and investors. But I'm happy with it. And I guess when it comes to investing, it's all about yourself. How do you feel about this? You know, when it comes to investing, you know, you, you just have to worry about yourself and not other people. But at the same time, it's great to be able to motivate with other people and grow your community. And that's what I'm trying to do with this channel. But anyways, not only is it about the portfolio value, but it's also about the annual income. When I first started off, I, my annual income was about a dollar. I still remember my first dividend when I got four cents from Cisco, but now my annual income is $155. So if I don't add a single dollar to my portfolio, and if I just keep what it, everything is and how it is, I'll be getting $155 a year with just this portfolio, which isn't quite a lot, but at the same time, it's good enough to pay for Netflix for a whole year. You can pay off maybe a dinner with this. It's great. But the cool thing is not only am I going to be getting $155 this year, but as my investments grow over time, for example, if Apple grows their amount of dividends they give per share, I won't be at $155. Maybe I'll be at $160, $162 the year after as these stocks will give out more and more dividends over time. And also if I reinvest it, I'll have even more and more, which is the greatest thing about dividend growth investing. It's all about that compound effect. So if we even take a look at future value, here's a way to kind of prove it. So this is my M1 finance account. We're just going to be looking at this one over here. And we're going to say that this is my dividend growth rate, which is really cool. By the way, this is a platform that I use completely free. I'll leave a link in the description. I did a whole video, so I'll leave it on the top over here. It's a great way to be able to track without having to do a lot of work yourself. But anyways, my five year growth dividend growth rate is 7.93%. My dividend yield to date is 1.91%. And right now, my starting annual income for 2022 is $155. If I don't touch anything and we assume that the price appreciation is 3%, in 2031, I'm going to be getting $407 of annual income. This is all about growth. And this is one of the best things when it comes to dividend growth investing is this consistent growth. I mean, you love to see if we go out 30 years or 25 years, we're going to see an even better steady income. It's exponential. There's nothing more that an investor likes to see than this chart right here. This is the greatest chart to ever lay eyes or for an investor to ever lay eyes on. So in 25 years, we'll be at $2,449 in annual income and my portfolio would basically go from $8,000 to $38,000 without having to add a single dollar. And for us or a lot of people out there, of course, we're going to add some money. So let's just say that we do $100 every single week, which comes out to $5,200. So 52 weeks times $100, 5200 So damn, just like that, we are going from $8,000 all the way to $367,000 and $22,000 of annual income in 24 to 6, 30 years from now. If you're 20 years old, you'll be 50 with basically annual income of $22,000. And of course, you have to adjust it for inflation. But again, that's not the premise of this whole video. And of course, you can add more over time. Your investments can do a lot better than expected or worse. It really just depends. But again, this chart is one of the beautiful things when it comes to dividend growth investing. So just to kind of recap this entire video, when it comes to dividend growth investing, we have that weird psychology as a dividend growth investors. When the stock market goes down, it's the perfect time to invest. We love that yield on cost going higher and higher. And then on top of that, I mean, look at that chart. It's just beautiful, ain't it? And you really don't have to put in too much work. You study, you learn the stocks that have great dividends over time, the ones that grow a lot, the stocks that do well. You understand which stocks work out for you. For example, the one I love to say, and this is basically the easiest example, is if you're younger, stocks like Apple or Microsoft, where they have a higher growth dividend rate and a nice appreciation stock, 
price is great for you if you're older and looking to retire soon stocks like coca-cola maybe even cisco kimberly clark they're not going to grow as much but they are going to be paying you out that fat and juicy dividend so that's pretty much it for this video let me know if you guys learned anything i mean tell me on a scale one to ten how beautiful dividend growth investing is and i'll tell you guys right now it's a 10 out of 10. so with that being said peace out y'all and take it easy and guys remember everybody